Joining me now, I'm delighted to say live, the British singer-songwriter Vivi Brown. Lovely to talk to you today, uh, Vivi. So we heard a little bit about, about your journey that, that you've been on now. What, what do you hope this survey of bullying and, and harassment in the, in the music industry will achieve? I think it's going to be a really interesting way to gather data so that we're able to really, truly understand what's going on. And um, it's an opportunity for people like myself who have had these experiences and various artists to talk about their stories um, and to make this a subject matter that we can all learn to accelerate change and make a difference so that we're not in this place where this has become normalised. I mean, I, I suppose some people who are not in the industry will look at it and say, well, if you, if you think of, of, of black successful artists, people like Ella Fitzgerald, you know, through to Diana Ross and Beyonce now, a lot of people might think, you know, if you're a black woman and you can sing, it's a, it's a great place to, to, to get a job. Were you surprised by what you experienced? If I be honest, I wasn't surprised at all from, um, from the experiences that I've had. I think a lot of the time, even when you're seeing the successes within the music industry amongst black women, there's a lot of nuances and things going on in the background. There's a lot of interactions happening with the people that you're working with that you tend to stay quiet about and you don't speak. And, and, and it's, it's not a transparent conversation un until now. So it wasn't a surprise to me at all. I mean, it, within my own circles of other black women and, and people that I, mentors that have come before me, this is a conversation that we've all always had internally, um, despite of the successes that might accompany it. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't surprised at all. And, and this is the reason why I wanted to be part of this campaign, to contribute to those stories and experiences coming out and for us to accelerate change. What were the kind of, of, of things that you experienced on a, on a daily basis? There were overt forms of racism where um, words were said to me that were awful, which I can't say on camera, but also it's the subtle nuances, the microaggressions that come through in your everyday experience, whether it's me having to Europeanize myself or if my hair isn't a certain way, having to, to, to dress and be a certain way and feeling under pressure to not embrace my, my blackness or my identity. Um, there was also lots of social media bullying as well, um, where there would be comments that would be said to me in reference to my race. Um, a sense of sexism and the patriarchy where there's a transactional um, sense of manipulation where I have to do something and and to to you know fragment myself in order to have success um, and so you have this sense of pressure as a woman and as a black woman to to act a certain way, a way in order to to progress in your career um, so it's, it varies between very obvious things and very uh, subtle things that happen and chip at your identity and self-worth I mean, you've been in the industry now for a long time and you've sold over, over a million records. Your latest album is called Am I British? You are clearly speaking very much with your own voice now. I mean, do you feel vindicated that, that you know, you've taken this time away and you've come back and you've been able to, to put it out there in your own words with your own voice? Absolutely. Um, I took time out because I really struggled um, with my mental health being in the music industry for all the things that we're talking about now. And when I had my two daughters, when I had my children, it really made me realise that I wanted to make music that had something to say. And that was very much about my identity and the things that I had experienced. So I, I do feel a sense of peace because of this album. Um, and uh, I want to kind of add to that by being a part of campaigns such as this where it's not just about music and um, art and culture but it's actually about using that to activate change and you say you have a sense of peace but do you also I wonder look back and think if I had kind of done what they'd said if I had gone down the route that they wanted me to I might have had a different kind of success you know you may have had more commercial success you know may say maybe 10 years ago or something do you do you how do you weigh that up in your mind do you think about that I do sometimes think about whether or not I had followed the rules because I was quite rebellious throughout my career. As much as I had experienced a lot of those 
um, f feelings of bullying and racism. I, I was very vocal about it. So I do wonder sometimes whether or not I had gone along with it, not been as vocal. Um, I might have had more success. There's a real stereotype when it comes to the to the black woman that when you do speak out, you're labelled as the aggressive black woman. And that's a phrase that we are more aware of now. And sometimes you feel like you have to silence yourself in order to have success. I was never silent. I'm quite mouthy quite rebellious. And yeah, I have thought about that many, many times. But, you know, I think integrity is important in this industry. And I just encourage other young artists and other women and black women, people in general, when you experience bullying or any aspect of what we're talking about in this campaign, you must speak out, you must be rebellious so that we can make sure that this doesn't happen within our institutions. Did you find that you had many allies when, when you were going through this? Did you feel that there were people that you could talk to within the industry? I felt very alone. Um, I felt like I didn't have many people to talk to at all. I mean, I'm 40 now, so my career um, was around the, the noughties, sort of 2006s. To, so I've had a real um, evolving um, evaluation of how the music industry has changed. But when I was around, I, I felt alone. I didn't have anyone to speak to. There wasn't any culture of wellness or talking about feelings or emotions or fear or... It was it was a it was quite an isolating feeling going through these day to day nuances and not being able to talk to someone. I obviously had my family um, and and close friends, but there wasn't anything else, and it did make me feel um, very frustrated. And it kind of was one of the reasons that led to my my men, my breakdown in the end because I before I had my children, just before them, um, I did have a breakdown from all of these things that ha happened to me in the industry, and I think it was being alone and feeling isolated that contributed to it. So having this conversation where we can collectively come together, artists and, and veterans and executives, and having these platforms to discuss it collectively can have a massive impact as well on people feeling heard so that they can express where they're at and how we can make a difference. And, I, and so thinking about that era that you're talking about in music, other people who were, who were doing well, similar age to you at that time, Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen, just a couple of names that spring to my mind, also women who clearly had issues with the way that they were marketed, the way that they were perhaps treated by the industry around them. Absolutely. I think there's a vulture culture where... When you're an artist in the machine of the music industry, you're kind of almost seen like a product or a statistic. And sometimes there isn't a sense of humanizing the process. And I think the media and that culture has a tendency sometimes to to not take into consideration the effects of what happens to artists when they're put into that machine. And yes, Amy Winehouse, who was someone that I knew personally, um, and Lily Allen and all of these artists, I think that we were at the point where social media was bubbling up. Um, and so there was this very much um, individualistic opinion on us. You know, everyone was talking about us in a way that had never been done before when it was mainly broadsheet journalism. So, yeah, I think generally we were around a time when um, a lot of new things were happening for people to pull us apart. And I think that was an aquarium for bullying to happen even more so. Um, but we're learning now. I think we're evolving. Things are moving and changing. Uh, we're becoming more aware of how we are supposed to respond to, to these things. There's more legislation being made in regards to how we deal with media, et cetera, but we still have a very long way to go. And this campaign is, is, is a part of accelerating that change so that we can move even more forward and make a difference. Well, best of luck with it. And really interesting to talk to you today, Vivi Brown. Thanks so much for joining us on Sky News. Thank you. Thanks very much.